What's up? It's Mitch here. Welcome back to another video. And if you guys have been following me over on Instagram, you'll know that recently I upgraded from the Fuji X-H1 to the Fuji X-T3. And it has now become my main video camera. And so far, I'm really, really enjoying shooting with it. One of the things I love most about Fuji cameras, and the X-T3 is definitely no exception to this, is how customizable they are. You know, in terms of setting up the menus and all the custom buttons, um, it really makes the shooting experience much more enjoyable. So today, I thought I'd make a video going through how I set up my X-T3 for shooting beautiful cinematic videos. This video is gonna be fairly similar to the one that I did on the X-T3. X-T2, simply because the X-T2 and the X-T3 both share the same body, very similar button layout and almost identical menu with the exception of a few small things. But the X-T3 has really added some amazing features and I think it's worth making a new video uh, showing you guys how I set up the X-T3. It's important to know that this is simply how I set up the camera for my style of shooting and it's not necessarily going to suit everyone so feel free to make minor tweaks to your camera but overall this has just made the shooting experience so much more enjoyable for me. So I've got the X-T3 here on a tripod. I'm gonna bring this over. And I've got my iPhone here set up um, to record the back of the screen so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing and follow along. All right guys, so jumping into the settings of the camera and first I'm gonna start with the top dials. So these top dials control both ISO and shutter speed. And most people who pick up a Fuji camera for the first time, they just kind of assume that this is how you change the camera settings. This is how you change the shutter speed and the ISO. And while you can do that, that's one of the big features of the retro styling of the Fuji X-T3. You don't necessarily have to use these dials. And if you can imagine being on a, on a set and having to take the, the camera away from your eye and then fiddle with these dials and then up to your eye again, it doesn't seem super efficient. So what you can do in order to make changing settings on the fly a lot easier is just setting these top dials and also selecting some options in the menu, which we'll go through soon, in order to just use the X-T3, just like a normal DSLR. So you've got your shutter speed adjustment on the back and then your ISO adjustment on the front. So in order to do that, first of all, you wanna set your top dials. So this shutter speed dial here, you wanna set it to T, so you can change it from whatever it was on to the T setting, and then you're gonna to wanna to lock that dial off. Now with your ISO setting as well, you wanna to go to the A setting and then also lock that dial off. The exposure compensation um, doesn't really make a massive difference. So I just leave that set to C or zero, it doesn't really matter. So now jumping into the menu, after we've set our top dials, you wanna to go to the setup menu, which is the little wrench icon, and then go across to the button dial setting. And then you simply wanna go down to the ISO dial setting A. So if you remember, we set the top dial to A, um, and now we're going to choose what we want that value to be. Now, by default, it's set to auto, but what we actually wanna set it to is command. So now once you do that, half press the shutter, go back to the main shooting window. If we click in the front dial, then we get this choice. We can either have exposure compensation or ISO, and you can see we can switch between the two. Now, once you select ISO, just by pressing in that button, now the front dial, we have complete control of our ISO. And by default, this back wheel here will control our shutter speed. And of course, if you're using Fuji lenses, all of your controls for aperture are on the lens. So I've got the 35 millimeter 1.4 on there right now, and you can see I'm changing the aperture. So it's really easy. I've got my ISO, I've got my shutter speed. I can pretty much use one hand. And the great thing about this as well is I'm looking through the viewfinder and I'm just changing the settings as I go. I can see what I'm doing. I don't have to bring the camera away from my eye. And that's really important and helpful when you're shooting video. 
If you guys want to set up the front and back dials in any other way, maybe you're used to them being reversed, maybe ISO on the back and shutter speed on the front, you can come into this command dial setting as well and um, obviously change those. So for lenses um, that have an auto aperture or if you set the Fuji to auto aperture, you can obviously control the aperture from the front dial as well. Um, I've got it set to aperture and ISO, but I obviously keep it just as ISO and then the rear dial as shutter speed. So that's really simple to set up in that menu there. So next up, we're going to go through some really basic menu settings that you should make sure um, you have right before you're shooting video on the X-T3. So we're going to go ahead and jump back into the same menu that we were just in. Um, and we're going to go to the screen setup. So first of all, you want to set your EVF brightness. I like to be quite bright, but obviously the brighter you make it, the more battery consumption you're going to use. Um, so I have mine set to plus two. You can set it to whatever you like. Um, and then obviously the LCD brightness, I like to have that almost full. The other reason that you really want to adjust this EVF brightness and the LCD brightness is because by standard it's set to auto. And what that's going to do is depending on the lighting conditions, um, the amount of light that's um, ambient light that's in the room or, or in the situation you're shooting in, it's going to change the brightness of the screen and the EVF based on that. And so sometimes it'll look like your image is actually changing exposure. None of the settings in the camera are changing, but it's actually the brightness of the, of the screen or the EVF that's changing. And that can um, be a little bit weird at first when you get the camera you're thinking am i in auto or am i in manual i'm not sure what's going on here my exposure keeps changing so you definitely want to have a manual setting for um, both your evf brightness and your lcd brightness the next thing is um i've seen this on a few fuji cameras um and it has been one of those things where you're like what is going on i can't figure this out but essentially what happens is you are looking at the back of the lcd and you're seeing the image but none of the picture profile or white balance or or any of those things are affecting how the image looks and it's because they they have this natural live view setting set to on and i'm not sure if that's default but you definitely want to turn that off because when it's set to on only when you hit record are you actually seeing the image that's going to be recorded before you hit record you're seeing this simulated what fuji thinks is the best looking image like as standard or something i'm very confused by it but definitely keep that off in this same menu as well, if we come down to display custom setting, this is where we're going to see what is shown on the screen while we're actually recording video. So a lot of these tools I'll actually turn off, things like the exposure compensation and the focus um, distance scale. I'll turn those off, they're more photography tools. Um, the only things that are really important to me are obviously your basic controls like shutter speed, aperture, um, ISO, things like that. The histogram is really important to me. Um, so you, I'm just going through this menu here and you can see which ones I've got turned on, which ones I've got turned off. Some of them uh, will show up in the video mode, some of them will only show up in the photo mode. Just experiment around with it and, and see what you like. Um, but yeah, definitely I'm going to have my white balance, my film simulation, um, all those kinds of things, my mic level, that's all really important when you're shooting video. This next menu is going to be where all of the customization happens. So we're going to go to function FN setting. These are all the customizable function buttons on the Fuji and these are really, really important tools just to be able to get where you need to go really, really quickly. So our first function button is on the top and I've got that set to Wi-Fi. So this area is really easy to access while you're shooting and I've assigned each of the up, left, right and down buttons to different functions. So first of all, I've got the up button set to set my mic level. So this is really important when you're moving from different situations or if you're doing an interview versus recording atmospheric noise, you want to have control over your mic level and having that there really quickly being able to adjust it on the fly is great. The left button is set to the film simulation. Again, once I've chosen my film simulation, I'm not really going to change it throughout the day. So that's just handy to have just in case. The right button is set to white balance. A lot of the time I'm using a manual white balance, so that's really handy. Um, using the Kelvin value to really dial in the exact white balance or finding something white, like a white card or a white wall in the situation that I'm shooting, taking a photo of it and using that custom white balance to set the white balance perfectly. 
The down arrow I've set to be able to quickly access the high speed recording function. So that's the 100 and 120 frames per second. Um, because I'm always switching to slow-mo to standard speed, it's really easy just to hit the down key on the D-pad and have access to really quickly be able to change into slow motion. The next two custom buttons that I'm gonna set up are the AEL button and the AFL button at the top of the camera here. They are the auto exposure lock and the auto focus lock. And I don't really use these two buttons for their intended purpose. Instead, I set the auto exposure lock to auto white balance lock. And I'll go through that in a second as to why I've set that. And the AFL button I've set to switch on and off the face tracking. I've already touched on this in the X-T2 video, but the main reason that I don't use auto white balance is when you're using a Fuji camera and you're moving the camera around, the white balance can change drastically. And it's not like a subtle change, it can be quite sudden. And sometimes it can ruin the shot. What I've actually done here is I've set the AEL button to be the auto white balance lock. So that actually enables me to use auto white balance now fairly reliably. Now I can come into the white balance menu and set it to auto. And this is like a little subsection here where you can change the shift. Usually I just leave it at the default. Now once you've pointed the camera at the subject, you can actually hit this button and you can see this little blue icon auto white balance lock comes up. And when you hit record now and let go of that button, you can see that we've got the auto white balance and that means the auto white balance lock has turned on. So no matter how much we move the camera around into different lighting scenarios, pointing it towards different colored walls and things like that, it's not actually gonna change our white balance. It's gonna stay set to what it was just before we hit record. And that actually makes auto white balance quite usable. And that's why I've set this button so that it's right in reach, really quick, really easy just to turn it on. Now that we're done with the setup menu, we can move to the My menu. This is where you can add all of the functions and features that you use most often so that they're there really quickly for you to change on the fly. So when you're in the main shooting menu and you hit the menu button, it's gonna come back to the My menu as default. And that's really, really awesome because all of our options here for shooting video, you know, um, the things that I feel are most important are right there and you can jump straight in and change what you need to change. So you can set it up in any way that you like. This is how I've got mine set up. Um, changing the movie mode, changing between resolutions and frame rates is really important. The interval time of shooting, which is grayed out right now, but if you change into photo mode, you'll be able to see that. I use that when I'm shooting time lapses, really love shooting time lapse. Um, the F-Log slash HLG recording. So because I'm actually using HLG quite a lot, I've got that there. I can change between shooting HLG or log and the um, picture profiles or Fuji calls them film simulations. Um, just changing between those is really, really good. H.265 and H.264, that's grayed out because I've got HLG chosen at the moment and that's only in H.265 mode. Um, the face and eye detection setting, again, we've got that set already to a function button, but it's nice to have it there as well. And the noise reduction, which I will switch on when I'm shooting in really low light situations, as well as the interframe noise reduction as well. You can turn that on and off for the 4K. Um, and then just the movie compression, which I don't really use that often. I'm usually, usually using a long GOP. So that's the My Menu. You guys can set it up however you like. It really is a combination of using the My Menu and the custom function buttons to set up the camera so that it's easy to access everything that you need to access while you're shooting. All right, next up is the Movie Setting Menu. I'm just gonna go through the settings that I like to change and fiddle with. So first up, we're going to go to the AFC Custom Setting, and this is where you tune the continuous focus settings. So first up, we're gonna go into this tracking sensitivity option. What this option means is if a new subject comes within the focus area, the little box on the back of the screen, that it's going to either ignore that subject or it's going to lock onto the subject. Um, because I'm fairly deliberate when I'm shooting, I'm looking at what's happening, people coming in and out of the frame, um, I like to have this set up so that it locks on really quickly. That way I can acquire new subjects, moving the camera around in a run and gun situation. I know that as soon as I put that focus box over that subject or that person, it's gonna lock on straight away and I can get that shot. So I have this set to zero. By default, it's set to two, and that means that it's gonna lock onto the new subject really quickly. Now, I like my autofocus speed to be quite fast. Some people like it to be slower so that you get that more natural focus pull um, kind of look when you're changing the focus area. 
but I just find that if I'm going to do a focus pull, I'm probably going to switch into manual and do it myself. That way I can regulate the speed and everything like that. So for the most part, I keep the AF speed quite fast so that when I'm switching between subjects, I'm not missing any moments and that's really important to me. I don't really use focus peaking. I like to use my eye to get focus and I also um, use this rear dial. When you're in the main shooting window, you can use that to punch in and then get your focus and then punch out. And you can even do that while recording. So that's really cool. Um, but I don't really use focus peaking, but you do have the option. So when you're in the main shooting window, even though you've got it set to standard in the menu, if you hold down the front dial, it'll actually change into peaking. And then if you hold it down again, it'll go back to standard. So that's just something quickly to note. I know a lot of people are like, why don't you use focus peaking? I just think it makes the screen way too crowded and cluttered and it takes my focus away from the composition and the exposure of the actual shot itself. For the same reason, I don't use zebras. I've turned zebras off as well. And I've been shooting with Fuji cameras for a while now. So I kind of know what's going on when I look at the back of the screen. You might need a little bit of help when you're starting out, but personally, I don't like to rely on zebras too much and um, yeah, just keep them turned off. So next up, the audio setting. If we come into this menu here, we can see that we actually have two different options, one for an internal mic level adjustment and one for an external mic level adjustment. That's really cool. We can actually have two separate settings uh, for whether we're using a shotgun microphone or whether we're using the camera's internal microphone. So you just wanna play around with this setting. You wanna go into a situation that you're shooting in and just see where the levels are. You want your levels to peak around negative 12 decibels. Obviously your shotgun mic is gonna be a different sensitivity to your internal microphone, but as standard, the external microphone is set to negative six decibels and I'm using the Rode Video Mic Pro. I've got the mic level limiter on, um, the wind filter is off and the low cut filter is off. Um, and then the headphone volume. I don't really use headphones to monitor my audio, um, but I've just got that set to the default. So in the past, I've shot with classic Chrome a lot. I've shot with pro negative standard, um, as well as a Turner. I love to Turner. Um, but since the firmware version 2.0 on the X-T3, um, we've had access to HLG. So HLG stands for hybrid log gamma. And basically it's like a log profile, but it is way less flat but it also retains all of the dynamic range of a log profile. So what I didn't quite like about log was that it had some banding issues as well as some macro blocking issues, but the HLG seems to be a really happy medium in between both. I've been using that exclusively lately on the X-T3 and I really love it. Um, if you guys want to see some HLG footage and the way I've graded it, I'm thinking about doing a how I grade HLG footage on the Fuji camera. So if you wanna see that, drop a comment below. Now in the main shooting window, if you press this Q button, you also have access to the Q menu. So if you're using a film simulation, you can change the highlight tone and the shadow tone. If you're using any of the film simulations except Eterna, I definitely recommend um, turning the highlights to negative two and the shadows to negative two, as well as turning off some of the color because you wanna retain as much of that dynamic range as possible. And also you can always add saturation back in post. Since I'm shooting with HLG, I actually don't have access to these options and that's fine because HLG is its own gamma curve itself and you don't really need to mess with that. I do turn the color down so you do have access to the color as well as well as the sharpness. Now I don't turn the sharpness all the way down to negative four. I still like there to be a little bit of sharpening going on in the camera and then I can add more later if I like. So that's pretty much all of the important settings that I use when shooting on the X-T3. If you guys have any other suggestions, please leave them in the comments below so that myself and everyone else can see them. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Leave a like on the video if you did and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. So thanks once again for joining me and I'll see you guys in the next one.